It's been three days. Let's take the glass out of the tumbler and see how it looks. I put it behind all the soundproofing tiles so I didn't have to hear it. So exciting. All right, this is what it looked like when it went in. See that? See what it looks like now. It's the tricky part getting this lip over the seal. Sometimes you can get like a little wedge in there, but be careful, don't use anything sharp. You don't want to puncture the rubber. This plastic knife seems to be doing pretty good. I'm, I'm pushing it with the non-serrated side because I don't want to uh, slice anything. And that little bit right there is, I don't think that's from the rubber. I think that's actually this metal slicing into the plastic knife. So I think we got it. Oh yeah. Whew. Look at that. Whoa, it all just turned into like Foam, gray foam. That's wild. I've never opened one of these. Maybe you guys are like, oh, yeah, that's what normal. That's wild. Oh, my gosh. Let's see what we have in here. There's a piece. Let's put it in this strainer. I thought this was just for catching butterflies, but apparently it's actually useful for this. Get some water. Oh yeah. Look at that baby go. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. I'm trying to get all that. It's like sea foam. It's like that gross seam foam stuff. Oh, this is so smooth. People are telling me, don't put it in. You should only do it two or three days. Be careful. It's been in four days. I put in two different kinds of grit. They're like, don't do that. You're supposed to put the grit in. You know, every week you put a different grit. That's how it works. I know, I know that. But I was experimenting. I was doing it my way because I don't like to follow rules. And sometimes that gets me in trouble or in jail. But, you know, I learned that way. Anyway, this is so smooth. So I also threw in, in case you didn't watch the first video, I threw in real sand, way more coarse. Than, than the grit that came with it. I threw in pebbles, like actual, like pebbles that go in a fish tank and like coarse pebbles too, not like smooth ones. And I threw in broken, real pieces of broken seashell. And I'm telling you, people are like, that's too much stuff. You're going to break the glass. This is a huge piece right here. This is one of the bigger pieces. And look how smooth that is. That is like, and this is, and look, it's frosted. It's not as frosted as I wanted. Maybe put it in a little bit longer, but this is the difference. This is the same glass. I mean, um, it's a little bit more opaque, not as see-through, but there you go. I'm trying to get the camera to show you, but look how those edges are smoothed. I mean, look, look at the difference there. That's awesome. I think I want, I want to put it back in for another like three days. My original thing was to do seven days, but let's, let's get, a, get another piece. Let's see if we can find another color. This looks like brown. Oh yeah. It is, this one actually came out lighter with the fogginess added. And yep, yeah, sure enough, even in that little crimply part, it is smooth as smooth can be. This is this is way smoother than the dollar store stuff because I don't think they tumble that stuff very long because they're giving you a whole bag for a dollar so they're, they're trying to be cheap. You can't blame them. But I mean, this, this is nice. Still got a little bit of the words on there from the bottle. You can't really see it, but you can feel it. Again, comparison. Like, if I'm not careful, this would slice my finger right open. This, like, I, I could I could throw a bunch of these in the bathtub and fall asleep. Yeah, I don't recommend falling asleep in the bathtub, but you know what I'm saying. There's a clear one, I think. This 
sea foam is gross. Yep, that's starting to get frosted, I think. Let's get this ugh, get the sea foam off of me. It's probably not as gross as the like in the real ocean, because there's like not probably not any organic stuff to um whatever, but yep. Now that got frosted. Now you can see the real frosting there. I guess they all got frosted, but the coloring kind of covered it up. But you can see it with the clear. Look at that. That is some cool sea glass. I'm loving that. Yeah, I think I'm I'm not afraid now. I think I'm gonna throw them back in. They're so rounded that it actually makes the whole piece of glass feel thicker and stronger somehow. It's crazy. But yeah, I, I think I'm going to throw them back in and go the, the last three days. I think I'm really going to go the full seven days like I planned. All right, here goes some green. I was trying to find green. Now, obviously, if I was doing this over the sink, it would be easier, but this is where the camera's set up. So that's what you guys get to see. Ugh, this foam is gross. Get it off me. I'm so prissy. Yeah, this one is like, it's totally, there's nothing that would scratch you at all. It is totally cool, but I want it more rounded. It's I'm not as happy with how rounded it is. Although, I don't remember putting in a piece in like this. So I do think a chunk broke off there at some point. So I do think the people who are like, that's too much stuff, you're going to break the glass. I think they had a point there. You guys might have had a point, but... Uh, so maybe if I put it back in there, maybe I'll get more breaks. I don't know. I really don't care because I'm having fun with this guy. And if four days did this, I want to see what really want to see what um seven days will do. In fact, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna throw in more broken shells and see what happens. I'm not gonna throw in more pebbles because I I don't want more weight to keep falling on these as it tumbles because I I do want to try to avoid more breaks. But I'm gonna throw in more of those seashells because they're super light but they're scratchy and I want to get the glass like all scratched up like try to make it all foggy. Like, real sea glass is so foggy. It has, like, this frosted look. It's so cool. Okay. So let's close that baby up, and we'll check back in three more days. Now, I should mention you don't want to do this over your sink because the grit will ruin your pipes and clog your sink and ruin your sink and all that junk and ruin your plumbing. Um, trying to uh, clean off this little area in here so I can make the seal again. I don't know if I'm supposed to dump everything out and start from scratch. Maybe I should read the instruction manual. That's so not fun. Okay, I found out from our handy dandy pamphlet that you can stick everything back in and you don't have to wash it all out and clean it in between cycles if you want to just keep going with the same stuff you're using. Um, I also found out this is kind of cool. Look, look at this. Imitating nature, the history of rock tumbling. The original rock tumbler is all natural. It's water. If you've ever picked up stones on the beach or near a river, you know what this means. Those rocks have been smoothed and rounded by water over long periods of time to make them look and feel the way they do. Here's how it works, in case you didn't know this. Over tens, hundreds, and even thousands of years, rocks, rocks get tossed around in the waves and currents of rivers and seas banging against each other. How rude. The sand and sediment act as abrasives to further smooth the rocks. So next time that family member of yours really irritates you and rubs you the wrong way, just think, that person is polishing me and making me smoother without me even realizing it. They're making me better. When the rocks are wet, the sheen gives stones a highly polished look. Since the beginning of civilization, humanity has tried to find ways to polish stones faster than nature. Humanity is always so impatient. In ancient Egypt, slaves would take roughly cut rocks and move them back and forth in trowels filled with sand and water, a process that took months to achieve polished stones. In India, stones were cut into preliminary shapes, were put in goatskin bags, I need a comma right there, with water and roughly ground rocks. Then workers would roll the bag on the ground for weeks at a time. 
Perhaps the first rock tumbler machine was invented in ancient India, where a teeter-totter board filled rolled jars filled with pre-cut beads, water, and abrasives, abrasives to create polished beads. The problem with all of these methods is that they took extremely long amounts of time to achieve results, and only a few rocks could be polished at once. Also, they took an incredible amount of constant human labor, as opposed to dun da 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 more successful methods. Modern rock tumbling began in the 1950s in Los Angeles. A rock dealer named Edward Swabata started selling hand-polished, irregularly shaped rocks called Baroque stones in simple settings, which became very popular. Smart man. To keep up with demand, he partnered with a friend, Warren Jones, to build a rock tumbling machine, sounds like an Indiana Jones movie, that was able to polish a larger quantity of stones in a short amount of time and with little labor. Spurred by Swabata's success, other inventors started producing their own versions of tumbler machines that over time became quieter, more durable, and able to polish larger numbers of rocks, even large enough to support wholesale efforts. By the early 1960s, a rock polishing craze had taken over the U.S., as well as a rock music craze. But this apparently started in L.A. instead of coming over from England. And rock tumbler machines could be found in homes across the country. What can you do with polished stones? You've spent the past month polishing stones. I have? No, I've spent the last four days polishing glass. Now what? Besides simple enjo simply enjoying... Looking at them, there is a lot you can do. Jewelry! Dun, 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 dun. The most common use of polished rocks is to make jewelry. And here I thought it was to put in slingshots to go after your enemies and the squirrels who eat all the bird seed out of your bird feeders. You can use the jewelry fasteners included in this kit. Or you can watch Matt's crazy art tutorials and figure out the most beautiful and elegant and amazing ways to rock your, ra ah, wrap your stones. You see where that's written? you got to read between the lines. Or you can do it yourself. Wrap a flexible wire around a single stone. Oh, look at that. They're trying to copy me. To create a pendant that can go on a chain, string, or ribbon to create a necklace. Or you can go to a craft store and buy materials to create keychains, earrings, pins, rings, and more. They're like so copying off of this channel. Home decor. You can use the polished rocks to create beautiful decorations for your home. For instance, you can glue the rocks to picture frames, magnets, or tree ornaments, you can use larger stones to accent flower pots or vases. You can fill a jar with rocks and create a candle holder. Use your imagination. Well, there goes my next seven videos right there. Huh? Uh 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 huh? <laughs> Which stones are included in your kit right now? There are some really beautiful stones included. You can learn about them if you buy this tumbler, but you have not, and I won't read any more to you. Cause I won't, no, I won't. We're all done. Ha! You're gonna have to buy your own rock tumbler. We're all done. We're all done. Clear, clean this gross foam. Ew! It's time to put the stones back online. Ha 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 ha! In a couple of days, we will check them once again. We will see if they have gotten frosted more, just like that breakfast cereal. Grrr! Happy ever after in the rock tumbler. All the pieces of glass will get so smooth. You can follow along and watch the channel make more videos about crazy rock tumbling experiences and stuff that fits into this phrase of melody. Rock tumbler, rock tumbler, rock tumbler. Hey, hope I get this thing back on. Will it seal? Will it work? Will it drip? Hope not. Time to end a video.